Colorado turns a deeper shade of blue as Democrats win key races by wide margins tonight. Joe Biden easily wins Colorado's electoral votes while Republican Senator Cory Gardner is defeated by what looks like a double digit margin. When it comes to fiscal issues on the ballot, Coloradans continue to show a conservative streak even as they put an increasing number of progressive politicians in office. We're going to show you the latest results and break down all of what this means for our state. We also want to check in with our politics guy, Marshall Zellinger, in a moment. First, though, let's take a look at the presidential results in Colorado. This is for Colorado's nine electoral votes. A 15 point margin for Joe Biden would be the largest margin for any Democrat for president in Colorado since 1964 when LGB LBJ defeated Barry Goldwater. As for where this leaves the presidential race right now uh, on the national picture, Biden has secured 192 electoral votes to President Trump's 114, obviously too close to call with the battlegrounds of Florida and Georgia and Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania and the upper Midwest still too close to call. Let's bring in Marshall Zellinger now to look at some of the other results. Marshall. Certainly not too close to call in Colorado, where Joe Biden leads by 15 points. Compare that to 2016, when Hillary Clinton only won by five points. What I want you to look at on this map, watch the red areas on the western slope and the blue areas in central Colorado. The red areas where President Trump had the support four years ago get lighter because there's more support for Joe Biden, even though President Trump won those counties. Look at the blue areas in central Colorado. They get a darker shade of blue for more support for Joe Biden. One way to look at Colorado this year is to look at the areas that should have had overwhelming support for President Trump, El Paso County and Weld County. Let's look at 2016 with El Paso County. 71,000 vote difference for President Trump now just 23,000. And El Paso County, Colorado Springs is where he held his rally in February. A quick look at Weld County four years ago, 30,000 difference compared to almost 20,000 difference this year. So even the deep red areas of Colorado showed more support for Joe Biden, showing why he now will have that 15 point win much larger than we saw from Hillary Clinton four years ago. Marshall, we continue to watch Colorado's only closely contested congressional race. This is uh, District 3 on the western slope in southern Colorado, where far-right candidate Lauren Boebert leads a two-time Democratic challenger, Diane Miss Bush. Yeah, in that third district, I want to show up the current map, 18,000 vote difference with 382,000 votes in. We're expecting perhaps maybe 50,000 more votes to go. Diane Mitch Bush outperforming where she did two years ago when she still lost by eight points to then Representative Scott Tipton with 146,000 votes on her side. This year, she's already got 182,000 and she's still down 18,000 to newcomer Lauren Boebert. And not closing the gap. Looks good for Boebert at this point. Marshall, thank you. Republicans in Colorado have lost their most prominent elected leader, further securing the Democrats' power in our state. Democratic challenger John Hickenlooper has defeated Republican Cory Gardner. Hickenlooper received 54 percent of the vote compared to Gardner's 44 percent. Gardner's seat was targeted as one of the most vulnerable in the Senate, and Hickenlooper had been favored the entire time. Hickenlooper's win will help Democrats try to take control of the Senate. In his winning speech, Hickenlooper acknowledged Colorado's record-breaking turnout and the change in politics here. And during a one-on-one -on -one interview with us tonight, he talked about what he'll focus on first when he gets to work in his new role. The next priority has to be COVID, uh, both uh, addressing the public health issues, but also hand in glove, we have to begin addressing the, the, the economy and, and getting people back to work and making sure that, that we provide the relief, uh, get immediate COVID relief for you know, the people that still haven't gotten back to work. Both Cory Gardner and John Hickenlooper have never lost an election until Colorado until Gardner's lost tonight. He was once considered a rising Republican star on the national scene, perhaps a future presidential candidate. Now booted from the Senate after just one term, Gardner's unquestioning allegiance to Donald Trump did not help. We will assist him with any questions that he might have as he navigates this new role. And please understand, to all the people who supported our efforts tonight, that his success is Colorado's success. And our nation and our state need him to succeed. We need to be united together.
Senator Gardner talking about John Hickenlooper, not Donald Trump. I did a poor job introducing that there, Marshall. Created a lot of confusion. Uh, John Hickenlooper's pickup of a Republican seat puts Democrats closer to control of the U.S. Senate. Yeah, and you'll see John Hickenlooper is the blue dot with the outline of red, which represents a flip seat uh, for the Democrats, but it's canceled out by this red dot circled in blue. That is Alabama, uh, former Auburn uh, head coach Tommy Tuberville taking the seat from Doug Jones, the Democrat who won that seat after Jeff Sessions left to become attorney general for President Trump. So the balance of power right now is a wash. We're still waiting for, you can see these two seats are currently outlined in red that could be questionable for Republicans possibly swapping over to the Democrats, but they still need to pick up another one in addition to that, 45-43 right now for the Republicans in this race. So here we have a situation, Marshall, where the last prominent statewide elected official from the Republican party is gone. And Lauren Boebert, if she wins a seat in Congress, becomes the face of the Colorado GOP. At a time when they're struggling to reach moderate voters, the face of the party is going to be somebody who uh, is anti-vaccine, somebody who's expressed support for QAnon, the conspiracy theory that the Democrats eat babies. Um, that's, that's tough sledding for Republicans who are trying to reach unaffiliated voters going forward. And her support is in western Colorado, far southern Colorado, not including Pueblo this time around. But the support is not even included her own area of rifle, which is Garfield County, which Boebert is currently losing by 2,500 votes. But when you look at the entire district of western Colorado and southern Colorado, you can see the pockets, Mesa County, far northwest Colorado, and far southern Colorado for where her support lies. All right. Thank you, Marshall. Another rising Republican star in our state, Heidi Ganahl. We talked to her about some of Colorado's Republicans, and uh, she didn't initially mention Lauren Boebert. She says Republicans, though, do have a deep bench. We asked her how they win statewide races again. Listen to the voters and talk about what they care about. Um, it's important to really stay in touch with uh, the general population in Colorado, and that means going to the Western Slope and being in Northern Colorado, Southern Colorado, as well as Denver and Boulder. But I think the way I was able to resonate was really just um, being a happy warrior and talking to people about an optimistic future. Coloradans have again rejected restrictions on abortions in this state. About six out of 10 Coloradans voted against an abortion ban after 22 weeks. Our Anusha Roy has been covering this and other social issues on the ballot tonight. And Anusha, abortion opponents in our state have tried and tried again. Yeah, this is definitely one of several attempts that voters have been asked about abortion. Specifically for 115, it was asking voters about prohibiting an abortion after 22 weeks unless it was necessary to save a pregnant woman's life. So the percentages you said for yes and no, that stayed about the same since the last time I checked in with you guys about an hour ago. But since then, I've had a chance to talk to both a co-sponsor for 115 and then the co-chair for the campaign against 115 and both both of them started off talking about their gratitude for Colorado voters. Just full of gratitude for all the people who voted for this proposition. Uh, I really believe in my heart that Colorado is not going to be the same because uh, so many things we were able to raise awareness of. Well, I'm feeling grateful for Colorado voters because the voters have said time and time again that they trust pregnant people to make complicated medical decisions without interference from politicians. A no vote keeps the state law the same so that an abortion in Colorado is legal at any point during a pregnancy. Colorado is one of seven states with a law like that on the books. And what to your point, Kyle, so voters have been asked about abortion three times in the last 12 years aside from tonight. But the question at that point was talking about defining a fetus as a human. And that's something, Kyle, voters rejected time and time again. Rejected by enormous margins, even though tonight's is pretty wide in Indeed, Anusha Roy, thank you very much. I'm going to turn to our political experts, Democrat James Mejia and Republican Kelly Maher now. Uh, the big headline out of Colorado tonight, although not unexpected, is the defeat of Republican Senator Cory Gardner, the last bold-faced name for the Republican Party. And I uh, want to ask you, Kelly, for your party, the GOP, what is a path back to relevance statewide, winning statewide races? 
Well, I think Heidi Ganahl said it best earlier. It's about reconnecting with people about the issues that matter to them the most. And this is really an opportunity for Republicans to take stock of where we are and start talking about some of the most important issues that are facing Coloradans. Certainly education, healthcare, and the economy are, are really three things that we need to be focused on. James, uh, what you're gonna hear, I would assume, uh, Republicans say in the coming months is, Democrats shouldn't overreach, don't overreach, and that's, that's, what, that's what people say when they have no political power and their only hope of getting it back is the other guy screwing it up to the point that the public gets mad and wants to throw them out of office. But is that a real concern, the idea of overreach, now that there is no check on Democratic power in the state of Colorado? I, I don't think overreach is, is going to be a problem in a state that is trending more and more blue along the way. And by the way, one issue that might be included on Kelly's list is handling uh, COVID and, and, and actually having a, having a plan on I a national healthcare. level. I said healthcare. I said healthcare. That's so, certainly part of it. So I, I think it makes it much harder. And, and I think when, when the face of the Republican Party is... Uh, is someone who the, the voters of Rifle, who know her best, haven't even voted for, um, it, it's going to be tough for them to rebuild. Uh, Lauren Boebert referenced there. Um, Kelly, so obviously the, the presidential race nationwide is too close to call. Uh, there's a chance President Trump loses tonight. Even if the president were to be defeated tonight, his stamp is still on the Republican Party, including Colorado's Republican Party. It is a Trump party. Does that mean you think that your party is going to continue to put up Trumpian candidates like Lauren Boebert in the years to come? Well, you know, Kyle, I, I want to go back to that point that you made about overreach, because I do think it's really important to note tonight that you know we're talking about the issues coloradans still have voted now to reduce taxes and we're we're seeing that the other thing to vote on fee increases is too close to call right now and so we've seen this time over time that there's this separation between the people and the candidates which have been trending more and more left but Coloradans are still voting small government on the issues. And so I think that we really need to refocus on the issues. I mean, that is without question. Coloradans have shown over the last few election cycles that they are absolutely willing to vote for people who promise to raise their taxes, but won't vote to raise their own taxes uh, through ballot initiatives. Lastly to you, James, in our final 15 seconds, because of that structure that allows Coloradans to vote on tax increases, are Democrats finally gonna come for the taxpayer bill of rights in the next couple of years and try to take that away? I, I think so. I, I think that's inevitably coming. Well, we've shown, pro shown progress towards that, and, and I think that's the next step. I think I just saw Kelly crack a smile. I think that could be the first one tonight on an otherwise difficult night for Republicans. James, Kelly, thank you for your insight as always. We're following some other races, including Congressional District 6, which covers parts of Aurora, Centennial, and Brighton. Democratic Representative Jason Crow has won a second term. He defeated Republican Steve House, Colorado's former GOP chair, about 58% to House's 39%. Crow was elected in 2018, part of that first big blue wave in Colorado, when he easily beat incumbent Mike Kaufman. And then there's the issue with wolves. Prop 114 would give Colorado Parks and Wildlife permission to make a plan to reintroduce gray wolves into western Colorado. They've already been spotted in Colorado. It's a very split, very tight race. Yes, votes lead by about 20,000 votes. We'll be right back.